Chances are, if you've been on Instagram lately, you've seen something along the lines of comment or reply a certain keyword to get something in exchange. DM automation using tools like ManyChat has really taken off and has honestly become the norm on platforms like Instagram. But is it doing more harm than good to your engagement? And should you even be using this in your strategy into 2025? As a video content strategist and agency owner, I kind of wanted to share my two cents as someone who actively has used many chat DM automation funnels for my own business, but also for all of our clients. So I've seen a lot of the benefits, but I also want to mention and voice some of the things to just be cognizant of and wary of if you do decide to use them. So first, it's important for us to get on the same page of what is DM automation? Essentially what it is, is on a place like Instagram, if someone comments a certain word or does a certain action, it will result in a little robot going in and automatically sending a message to them in the DMs. In that message, it can include links, it can include images, it can also include an entire funnel of messages that depends on how they're responding. And I remember when this first started, there were only a select few people and I was so intrigued on like how much engagement these posts and pieces of content were getting when people were prompted to take that action. And so I started early on using this in my content. And what makes this work so well is because you're driving engagement and conversions. So while someone is going in your post and commenting a certain keyword, not only are they getting that action directly to their inbox, which really reduces the amount of human error of going to your link in bio, trying to see where to go, what to click, how to opt in, it's right in their inbox and they can directly take action on it. But since they commented on that post, it also causes that post to naturally do better because it's getting engagement. And that is why this really took off because it kind of felt like a win-win situation. But with all good things comes a lot of opinions. And I've been seeing more and more creators addressing messages along the lines of, I'm really upset that I have to engage to get something from you. Or also just saying, I am so annoyed with seeing everyone telling me to comment something in their pieces of content and going into a comment section and that's literally all it is. So that leads us to going through the pros and cons of using something like DM automation in your Instagram content strategy. Let's first go over the pros. The first one I already mentioned is that it drives engagement. For one of our clients where we use DM automation, I would say 50% or less of the time in their content Whenever we do the DM automation, that content not only gets more comments, of course, but it gets more reach, more views, and has even led to viral content. And while there's definitely other ways to encourage and drive engagement on your content, the incentive of getting something in return for commenting, it just works for driving more engagement and having your content just overall do better. And I truly don't understand how consumers get mad at creators for doing something that drives engagement. Like I truly think people forget like what the whole point of social media is. And for a lot of creators, when engagement is a really big objective and number that they're looking at, that is literally the least you can do to support your favorite creators. That causes absolutely no harm to you, no cost at all to you. The next pro of using DM automation is it just makes it so much easier for you to give your audience what they actually want. I want to give an example from my perspective as a consumer. I love using Instagram to find delicious recipes, like my all of my saves in my personal account. And I notice such a big difference where one of my favorite creators posts a recipe, I can comment the keyword, I can go to my DMs, and I get the direct link to that recipe versus another creator, amazing recipe. They say, go to the link in bio to find my blog for the recipe. So I go to the link in bio, I go to their blog and then I am like literally searching high and low just to find the recipe. And then I forget the name of the recipe and, and then I just maybe dip out. Like I completely leave entirely. 
And so when we make it easier for our people to get the free, valuable things that we're sharing, we are helping them. That's what we want our content to do. Even with the best link in bio tools where you can make your feed essentially clickable or like to know it or whatever tool you're using to share a link that's associated to a piece of content that you're doing, there truly is no easier way than me just commenting a word and you just sending it to me. And that is also why I don't understand why people complain about DM automation because for the most part, it is doing so much more benefits for consumers than harm, which we'll get into the harm in a little bit. And the final pro that I personally really value as someone who is behind the video content strategies of different brands is that it makes it really easy to track results. You're able to see on specific pieces of content and just from your Instagram content specifically, when people are taking action, and even when they take that action, if they completed the action of opting in, clicking a link or anything like that. It's become a really important metric that I like to look at when I'm pulling analytics for our Shine Studio clients because I'm able to see, oh, when we posted specific types of content or when we did a launch or when we promoted this, these certain pieces of content was able to drive hundreds of people that were opting in for it. It really helps us know when we're doing our job, but also to see those trends on certain pieces of content, certain types of calls to action that drive the most action to those freebies or lead magnets or funnels or even paid offers. So if you've always thought, how do I know if my content is actually working? A tool like ManyChat is able to show you the types of numbers so you can literally see it right then and there. So now let's talk about the cons. The first thing is that it has gotten really obnoxious. Just like with any trend, when everyone starts to do it, it starts to get old real fast. And when you're scrolling on your Instagram feed, you're on your stories, and all you ever see is someone telling you to say a keyword, it is just annoying. And so I think it's important to acknowledge that it has gone too far. On top of that, it can just feel very transactional with your audience. And the harm of creating that transactional relationship with your audience is they start to assume that is the norm on how they communicate with you. If the norm is that they comment keywords and you give them stuff, that they're going to constantly be demanding and asking for stuff, whether it's for more content or for you to do certain things, versus like actually having conversations with your community, which I feel like kind of goes on to one of the other cons of your driving engagement, which is really beneficial in a lot of cases, but you're not necessarily driving quality engagement of conversations and people commenting on each other comments and laughing and getting value and all those things that can happen in a comment section when hundreds of the comments are just people commenting a key word, there really isn't space for that. And while generating comments and replies will always be good for engagement, when we think of the longevity of your brand, and especially if you're selling an offer or a service where you're going to want to warm up your audience, there really isn't a lot of opportunity to do that when we're not going deep with our audience. And kind of the last thing, which is just very specific, but you know, it still is a con, is that at the end of the day, a tool like ManyChat is a robot. So it doesn't have that human nuance that can prevent things like false triggers. Even if you do all the right settings, someone could absolutely write a very thoughtful comment and one of your keywords be in that comment, which then leads to a robot sending them a message they didn't ask for. And that just kind of feels like, do you even care? Like, are you even in your comments? Like, are you even creating your content? I feel like when I first started using ManyChat, people were so amazed. They're like, how did you send that message so fast? And they didn't really understand the robot nature to what was happening. But now like people know what's happening. And so I think that can also lead to that disconnection with your audience. And kind of another con that I naturally just started thinking of as we're having this conversation is if you rely all of your conversions, all of your link clicks on a tool like DM automation and ManyChat, which arguably is like somewhat trendy, 
it is gonna make it really tough for you if that is ever stripped away from you and doesn't work or doesn't work as effectively. Like if you relied so much on DM automation in your strategy, will people ever actually click a link or go to your link in bio because you're so used to that being your primary conversion method? So as you see, we have a good balance of pros and cons. And with all of that being said, I really don't think a tool like ManyChat is all bad. I think there's a lot of benefits, but there's definitely things to be conscious of, especially as it kind of becomes the norm and more heavily used on Instagram. So I wanna share my approach of using ManyChat for myself and my clients. The first is that for the most part, I like to lean into sharing free things or very low cost, low ticket things as my calls to action podcast episodes, freebies, or my favorite tripod from Amazon. I found overall, it's not that it can't work, but for higher ticket services, offers, and products, I think there's partially an element of people not wanting to like publicly say they're interested, but I also just think that there's a higher touch element really required in that. The other thing I opt for, and I know there are so many other like DM automation chat funnel experts out there, like I am not that, is I honestly think simpler funnels are the better. And when I mean simple, I literally mean they comment or reply a word and it literally just sends them the link. Like that is how I like to keep the funnels, partially because like it's easy to create and manage, but I feel like when there's a really thorough funnel where they have to comment their name and then they have to pick an option here and then they have to do that, like these things get really intense. I'm not saying they don't work. I know they absolutely work for some people, but I feel like that really leans into the robotiness of like, I know I'm not having this conversation with you, and I don't like like. So that's just like my personal thoughts and takes on it. And even when I've opted in for those things, I'm like, just give me the link. Just tell me how to join the email list. Like, just tell me where I'm supposed to go. Like, I don't wanna be having a conversation with a robot for three minutes. So like I said, personal opinion, but just deliver what they asked for and we don't need to send a million automated messages. And the most important thing is I do not use it in all of my content. I do not use it in all of my clients' content. We never aim to have 100% of the videos we create for our clients always have a DM automation call to action. Other calls to action I really like are just having them comment something more conversational or having them save or share it if that's relevant. Or sometimes I literally will tell them, go to the link in button. <laughs> and so I like to have diversity in the calls to action that I'm including in my content because that really helps combat one of the cons we discussed of it just being obnoxious and in all of the content. I wanna build a strategy for me and my clients that goes way beyond just DM automation funnels and is able to build community, build trust, and really build that engagement beyond just people asking for things. So those are kind of all my thoughts when it comes to many chat, DM automation, and chat funnels. I would love to hear from you in the comments of this, or maybe tag me as you're listening to this on Instagram stories at Shine with Natasha. And just tell me like, what are your thoughts on this? Like what's working for you? What are your pet peeves? Where do you see this going? I think it's still so new, but definitely not going anywhere. And so I think this conversation is going to continue to evolve and change. Also, like I said, I'm definitely not a DM automation expert, but it is something we set up and implement for our clients. So if you want me to share more tips and strategies on what has worked, what we do for our clients, definitely let me know as well. But I hope you found this video interesting, gave you some things to think about. I'll see you in the next episode. And if you wanna learn more about different types of calls to action you can have in your video content, I highly recommend watching this video in the video sales school series next.